This is the 10 Minute Contrarian Podcast. This is VP. We are a solutions based podcast diving into the world of contrarian investing and alternative finance. You can find us hosted on the No Nonsense Forex YouTube channel, nonsenseforex.com, and podcast players everywhere. Episode 150 is brought to us by Bybit. Trading volume was through the roof this week. I wonder why. It's, it's, it's the greatest of all things. I've said this many times in the past. When you trade, you can absolutely bank in bear markets. And it's great, too, because you're earning crypto, and you're earning it at lower prices. Or sometimes in Bybit's case, you're earning Tether, and you can spend that Tether on anything you want. And then you can spend it right there on the spot market at Bybit. Not to mention all the great promotions, airdrops, giveaways, things like that. What you want to do is go down to the show notes, click on my Bybit blog, read the blog. It gives you all the information you're going to need. My affiliate link is at the bottom. If you click that link down below, you get a cashback bonus. And as soon as you deposit and start trading, you are immediately plugged into that entire ecosystem. It's a great place to be because as everybody already knows with Bybit, membership has its rewards. It is a 10-Minute Contrarian podcast, and two days ago, I wrote a blog saying that if you liked crypto back when Bitcoin was at 73000 you're going to love it now that it's fifty-nine because the fundamentals have not changed one bit since it was at seventy-three. But one of the reasons that I did not include on purpose, so I could talk about it today, was all of the corporate partnerships that blockchain companies have right now. I think this really goes unmentioned for the most part. And if you are a real long-term holder, which we are on this podcast, this has to be one of the most exciting things out there because it more or less validates the entire industry. And it proves all of these silly Bitcoin maxis wrong. You know, Bitcoin maxis like to say, you know, Bitcoin to the moon, everything else to zero. And when they give examples of blockchain companies, or just all coins in general, what are the examples they always give? Doge, Terra Luna, Celsius, Dog with Hat. It's like, come on, dude, who are you trying to fool here? Just because you got it wrong, but you're so tribal, you can't let it go. You know, this is what episode, I think it was 141, was all about. It was one of my stranger episodes, I'll admit, but it was the one called My Friend Jeff. And the majority of you got the point of that episode. And that episode was, you know, some hills just aren't worth dying on. You, know, you might say that us contrarians are a tribe in ourselves. I don't think we are, because I think that we are a lot more fluid than most people who have a certain belief system. We all have our belief systems, but at the end of the day, all we're doing is playing probabilities. We understand that some hills just aren't worth dying on, and that's also why we're diversified just in case there are entire sectors that we're wrong about. And unless you think your favorite Bitcoin maxi is smarter than most major Fortune 500 companies, then the better altcoins and the better blockchain companies out there are here to stay. And not only that, if you get it right, you will probably make more investing in them than you will Bitcoin at the end of the day. And in case anybody out there is new and wants to argue and doesn't want to go back and listen to any of my other podcast episodes, I am a huge Bitcoin bull. And I can understand why Maxis feel the way they do. You know, they were on an island in the way they thought years ago when everybody else was against them and they turned out to be right. You know, so why wouldn't they develop a bit of a God complex over time? But here, they're wrong. Blockchain is the future of computing and banking and a lot of things. And many, many extremely successful companies have taken note. They see the future too, and they want in as soon as possible. So I thought we'd have a little bit of fun here. What I'm going to do is I am going to list off the companies that a particular blockchain already has as a partner. And I want you to see if you can guess the blockchain. We're going to play name that blockchain. Now, this was a difficult episode to do research on because there is no master list for this. It would have been super nice if there was. It would have been very easy to research this episode, but there's not. It's kind of scattered. We don't know uh, how strong these partnerships are, if they're only using blockchains for a very small part of their company or if it's on a larger scale. We don't know that. Uh, These deals are not exclusive, so you might hear some of these companies more than once. And to my knowledge, the ones I am mentioning, these partnerships are still intact. This was the problem I had with Ethereum. Ethereum is not going to be one of the choices because if you look up Ethereum partnerships, most of their partnerships are with other crypto companies. 
And they did have something called the Ethereum Alliance back in 2017, which did have large companies attached to it, but that was 2017. You know, in crypto years, that may as well be 1917. So if I miss any companies too, feel free to go to YouTube. We do broadcast these podcasts on YouTube. Go to the comments section and add some. But I was able to compile quite a bit here. And by the way, this episode was inspired by the news, if you remember a couple weeks ago, that it was fake news, actually. It was very incomplete news that Hedera Hashgraph had partnered with BlackRock. And Hedera Hashgraph went nuts that day. Uh, But it turned out to be not what people thought it was. It wasn't complete fugazi, but it was just a lesson that you shouldn't jump into things on news that comes out that day. You know, as always, take a long-term approach, be smart, buy when things are cheap, and most importantly, know what you have. And so maybe this episode will go towards understanding more what you have and what you might have in the future. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. Which blockchain should I begin with? Here's an interesting one. All right, so I'm going to say the companies and you tell me which blockchain you think it is. And by the way, these are, I only put in companies that I think most people have heard of. I left out the smaller ones. Oh, and another one, I, I keep throwing caveats out here. There will be no Binance Smart Chain because most of their companies that they partner with are Asian and I just don't know much about them. Not to say they're not significant, I just haven't heard of most of them. So here we go. First one, we have Petrobras, Huawei, Interpol. I don't think you guys are going to get this one, but give it a try. This one's Cardano, which is kind of weird because you always think Cardano is so isolationist in what they do. They're like, we just want to be a decentralized blockchain. You know, we don't want to partner with anybody because that would make us more centralized. That seems to be the ethos of this company. But no, they are actually partnered up with some pretty big names. Petro Brazil, which I've mentioned on my dividend blog, is a, a pretty big deal. They are the oil company of all of Brazil. And there are companies who work with Interpol who are now using Cardano to um, do some identification when it comes to ballistics and all sorts of cool things. Uh, But I know a lot of you here hold Cardano, and there hasn't been a whole lot of interesting news coming out lately. But just so you know, they are also moving forward, and big companies and all, all of Interpol, for Christ's sakes, they see it too. Moving on, we have MasterCard, Visa, Shopify, Abu Dhabi Global Market. Any guesses? This is going to be Solana. Um, now, Solana is not going to have as many companies as some of these blockchains are, mainly because, and you always have to keep this in mind, as we, we know with Solana, their chain breaks down a lot. Still, you know, less than it did before, to their credit. But if you are a major company, you know, super duper lightning speed is less of a concern than having the chain up and online all the time. So this does make sense. Let's see, where do we go from here? Okay, let's do this. We have Boeing, Dell, Google, IBM, Mondelez, Ubisoft. Mondelez is the big packaged food conglomerate, by the way, that gives everybody diabetes. I don't think you'll get this one either. This is actually Hedera. Uh, Hedera is a pretty exciting project. They have made moves a lot of blockchains above them have not made. And they are not currently in our portfolio. Maybe someday, you know, I get some Hedera crazies in the comments section every once in a while. It's like, look, they're on the list. But as I always say, you can't invest in everything. I don't have an endless supply of money to just put into yet another L1. But that doesn't mean I don't like what they're doing. I certainly do. And for some of these big companies to choose Hedera over larger blockchains, you know, pretty impressive. I got to give them some credit there. But just keep in mind that BlackRock partnership was not what people thought it was. Moving right along, this one I think is going to be the easiest one, or one of the easiest ones of the episode. Uh, Just keep in mind what these companies all have in common, and I think you should get this. So we have Bank of America, PNC Bank, Standard Chartered, Santander, American Express, which is also a bank, by the way. Name that blockchain. This is going to be XRP. Even though we don't hear a whole lot about XRP, unless it's about their legal case, they are moving forward and they are doing exactly what they are supposed to be doing with the partners they should be doing it with. And the whole reason we hold is once this case finally ends and they get to do what they're supposed to do with the people they're supposed to do it with and other banks and other financial institutions see this, then it should be pretty smooth sailing after that and you're going to be glad you held XRP. 
you know, it's an if, we know that, but it's an if that at least we here at the podcast feel is worth taking. Next up, we have Amazon, Citibank, possibly JP Morgan, Tencent, MasterCard, Deloitte. Name that blockchain. So this may come as a bit of a surprise because these are a lot of companies and a lot of really big companies, and they have chosen Avalanche. And I was personally aware of some of these partnerships back when I did the Avalanche episode long ago, and I knew what they had in the works for Metaverse and Web3 gaming projects. And that's why I was like, guys, this is a sleeping giant. And I think, fast forward to now, this has become a lot more evident. Even though back when I made that episode, people had kind of forgotten about Avalanche and some of the things they were doing, but these big companies hadn't. They know. And now you do too. All right, I think some of you are going to get this one. Get ready for this. We have Nike, Starbucks, MasterCard again, Adobe, Meta, Adidas, Mercedes, Reddit, Google again, DraftKings, Prada, Robinhood. Name that blockchain. It's in our portfolio. We like it a lot. This, of course, is Polygon. And just like Avalanche, set up very, very well with their IMX partnerships and all the other stuff they're doing to become a very big player in the metaverse and Web3 gaming space as well. Now, their place on the overall board has dropped some because they haven't come out with a lot of exciting news recently. But that's because their exciting news has already come out, and now it's just time to put pen to paper and get to work. You know, we here at the 10-Minute Contrarian Podcast, again, are long-term investors, which means we want things that are going to work and are going to be adopted. Because these are chains that companies that already have more money than God want to use. And that's what's important to us. Not some brand new narrative that was created yesterday by some techie dweeby guy saying that, you know, the tech is inferior now because of XYZ. No. First of all, that's a silly narrative anyway because blockchains do evolve and improve and get better. But the ones that are already large, you know, the ones we invest in, already have a good amount of money. So they can also evolve and get more partnerships over time. And that's what we like to see. That's why I personally don't, even though I like the idea of some of these new layer ones that have come about, and Layer 2s, for that matter, even though there's like a million of them now, and some of them are just clones of Aptos and Optimism. But these things are also companies. We are investing in companies. And the companies that have withstood one, at least, bear market, possibly two, possibly three, and have still managed to accumulate some really nice partnerships and a really nice war chest of money so they can get through the future bear market cycles, which we all know are coming, That's where I want to be. And that is where really large companies who have done a very good job investing also want to be. They don't want to be with the brand new hot thing. They want to be with the established thing that they know works. And so call me crazy, but I want to be there too. If that means my money only 5 to 10 X's instead of 15 to 20 X's, that's fine because I am also a steward of my downside. And that means something too. It means a lot, actually. If you can enjoy the asymmetrical upside in crypto without getting wiped out on any of your positions at the same time, or with very few of them, that's really where the game's won. And for this last one, uh, I'll just, I'll pose this question to you. There are no actual partnership partnerships here, but every blockchain I just named that has all these partnerships with all these major brands, which blockchain are they also going to have to rely on to get any of this done. There's one company that they're all going to need. Name that blockchain. Every single one of these blockchains I just named, including XRP, including Cardano, they're all going to need Chainlink. And we all know what Chainlink's been doing, trying to link all these blockchains together as well. It's really exciting what's going on in that ecosystem. So for those of you who follow me on Twitter, if you've ever been wondering why somebody like me who likes to buy when things are really cheap and has already bought a lot of stuff when it's cheap, continues to add on to some of these projects when the market dips, this would be your reason why. It's because I see a really, really bright future, which I know is not 100% probability, but I understand asymmetry and I think the probabilities are certainly high enough to increase my position at higher prices. 
So if you are holders of any of these tokens, I think you should feel pretty good about it. And if you are not, but are interested in some of these tokens, well, now you have a good reason to be very bullish for the future. And not financial advice, but even if you were to start investing in a lot of them right now, you would probably not be crazy at all. You would still be quite early.